All right, all right. Here we go, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for joining, guys. Everybody, let us know where you guys are from. Got an awesome show today. Got this brother here. Much respect for this guy. So I'm so excited to have this guy on the show. So uh, let us know where you guys are from. Um, comment below. Uh, I'll give you guys a shout out. So um, uh, so excited to have this guy come on the show. So um, <laughs> let's go and bring him on anyways. So let's go ahead. So this uh, give him a moment to jump on and put him on. Hey, too. What's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> Guys, give to a few like, a few thumbs up. Um, I'm excited to have him. Let's go ahead and start the show here. And uh, here we go, all right? So, uh, hey, guys, welcome to Hustler Show 45. So, uh, what, you know, uh, I've been following you for a while, like I said. And uh, dude, i I just been looking at your... Um, you, just your profile, man. It's like you you started at this this brother here started as a as a marine, went became a fireman, and now he's like a business owner uh for a while. So I wanted to bring him on the show because I, you know, just respect the guy, you know, just the the hustle he has. So uh hey, welcome to, to the to the show, too. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. <laughs> I know it's late, yeah. You, know, you probably like uh, out working late last night, right? I think we were talking or something like that. Was yeah, we had uh Worked at the firehouse yesterday, twenty four hours, and then we went straight to the shop. But the shop was a easier day today, so we got home a little earlier today, which was good. Any any bad last night? Uh, what did we do last night? No, we slept through the night, so that's always a good night. Yeah, that's good if it's quiet, yeah. so you don't want anything bad happening. So, what the what 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 city are you in? So I actually live in Maplewood, but I work over at uh, in St. Paul. Okay. You know? So, okay, so uh, so I, I know we got a lot of viewers from like uh, Minnesota. So uh, give this guy a thumbs up. He's out there, you know, watching over you guys. Yeah, working so. on the east side. <laughs> so, uh, hey man, so let's talk about like your your marine life. You know, how did you get started in that? Like, um, like did you just did you want to do that all the time? Or yeah, no, so you I, know? yeah, no. For me, I actually never even thought about it um it was something nothing i knew about i mean this was in 2005 when i signed up so at yeah the time, i just didn't know anybody that was doing that and i really didn't know about the different branches and i didn't really know much about the military at all it's just kind of one of those decisions walking to the office and i, I guess the recruiter did his job got me <laughs> in but uh you know that's that's a 17 year old me uh just taking wow. pictures. So, so you, you just kind of walked in. I mean, you walked in or they, they came out and talked to you. On oh, yeah, that. you know, they, those guys are really good at what they do. Those recruiters, they know what to tell you. So, but I think it was good at the time. I needed something. I, I didn't know what I was going to do after high school anyway. So kind yeah. of helped out and helped out. That's cool, man. What did you, you know, I know like a lot of my parents, they're like, no, you know, like absolutely no. You know, did was there any kickback on that? Or? No, you know, you know, my parents were... Uh, they're all for it. Uh, you know, in high school, oh. I just didn't have a good track record. You know, they didn't really go to school too much. None of that stuff just wasn't my thing, you know? So yeah. uh, I, I wasn't doing really well in high school anyway. So my parents were just like, you know, this dude probably needs a little kick in the butt. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, it worked out. Cool, man. So, I mean, I, like I said, I don't know any, uh, anything about, you know, being in the Marines or something, did you do a specific job or was you just like a soldier or something like that? Or yeah, yeah. thanks so, for serving, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you join the Marine Corps, so they'll ask you like, what kind of job you want to do? And that could be anything, anything from like being a, working in the back, making food to like a buddy of mine used to fix refrigerators mm -hmm. to being a grunt, you know, which is the guys on the front line uh, shooting stuff and busting, busting into houses. So you kind of got all kinds of job, but uh, for me, I, became a what's called a crash fire and it's like firefighting in in the military so it's it's just a military firefighter basically oh so so that's kind of i'm assuming that's how you you migrate over to like just be like a like a firefighter right yeah so so the firefighting part that's actually something i had considered uh when i was like probably like 16 17 like i saw a documentary on tv and i was like man that's pretty cool i kind of want to do that the military thing that's kind of just randomly happened um, yeah and I, I had no idea like i said before i didn't know anything about the military so i didn't even know that firefighting was a thing in the uh -huh. military so then when i found out about that i was like well that could be like a good step up get the experience 
And then maybe that'll help me in the future. And it has, it did, it helped me land this job, but you know, at the time I just, uh, that was kind of the mindset, the idea. And so that's yeah. what I did, but yeah, no, it, it helped out. I mean, I think it probably benefited for sure. So I, I mean, okay, cool. So, so I mean, how long, I mean, you're pretty young, dude. I mean, <laughs> you look young. <laughs> so how long did you stay in the, in the, in the service? I mean, yeah. Like... So, so I went in, so you pretty much have, you know, two options. You can go in as a full timer, which is usually a four year contract active duty, or you can go as a reservist, which is usually about a six year contract. So I went in, um, pretty much right when I turned 18 and did six years. So I was out by 24. So I did six years of reservist. So, you know, you go over there for a year or two, then you come home and then you pretty much just stay home and just go like one weekend a month down to Minneapolis and, and serve your time. Um, so yeah, I mean, oh. yeah. Okay. You yeah. Cool. Any, uh, any, like any crazy stories <laughs> uh, you know, for me, the military was, I mean, it was a good experience. I, yeah. I to a few places we, did, we actually went to Africa for a year. Um, yeah, that was interesting. You know, we went out there as like a uh, what we were called. We were called a provisional security force for the base. Uh, so that was a good experience to go out there. Uh, they speak French out there, so I speak French. Uh, that's that's where my family's from. Oh, so oh nice. okay, yeah. So, uh, I got I got to experience Djibouti, Africa, in a different way than a lot of the people because I could communicate with the with the the people that live out there. So yeah, that yeah. was neat. You know, uh, especially to do it at a, at twenty years old. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, like any, like any certain task, like I think, so you're saying that what you did, what your job was like, kind of like, did you, did you face something like just crazy, you know, like, no, uh, you know, in the military, I never really did anything. So in Africa, we were just a pretty much like a, um, like, a, like a, basically like being cops for the base. Right. So we okay. just make sure people that are not supposed to be on base are not there. Um, and then we would patrol the city once in a while, but it was a non-hostile area. Oh, um, okay. So military-wise, I didn't see, you know, too much, too crazy. Yeah. Um, the crazier stuff that I had to endure there was probably just the physical activity stuff. You know, you're just right. not used to it when you're 17, 18. You never get your ass kicked. And so, you know, once you get out there and you get your ass kicked, especially in the Marine Corps, they're pretty yeah. good at doing that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was good. You know, you grow and you learn a lot from uh, being pushed. Oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. So like, okay, so, you know, I, I was always like, because when I was like, uh, man, when, when I got out high school, uh, I mean, I, I wanted to be, you know, in the service. So uh, I mean, my, my pops was like, nope, you know. So like, I, I was just always curious, like, how much I mean, how much does it pay, you know, just yeah, to, uh, you, and actually, I just looked this up, because I, for one, I, I don't remember what it was, because it was a long yeah. time ago. I know it wasn't that much, especially now looking back on it. But I went and looked it up. And so E1, which is like the first rank you get when you're in the military, yeah. uh, it's $1,700 a month or 20800 a year. So, <laughs> you know, you're barely making anything. But, but you know, the, yeah. the military does do is they house you, they pay for yeah. your medical, they pay for all the food that you can eat. You know, so in a way, it's almost like just money in your pocket, right? And, you know, at, at that age, a lot, most uh, guy and girl in the military will probably blow it on, like, you know, going out on the weekend and just uh, yeah. buying Mustangs when you're not supposed to. That's kind of what we do when we're, like, 18, 19, you know, and it's kind of normal with everyone. But, yeah. yeah, you don't really have any expenses. So if you were smart at the time, you know, you could save a lot of it and invest it. But, you know, yeah. I, you don't think like that at 18. So, but, yeah, no. And that surprised me, you know, twenty one thousand dollars a year to um yeah, to go oh, yeah. Country, man. you can't really go anywhere, right? Or can you to spend that? No, nah, I mean you can you know, a lot of times you'll be on base somewhere. So yeah. like for me, I was down in Goodfellow, which is an air force base in uh San Antonio, Texas. So you had the weekend and you could go out on the weekend and you know, usually you end up at a bar or you end up, you know, do yeah. or a movie theater, you know, whatever that town has to offer. Uh well, yeah, a lot of money. I mean, I think a lot of money gets blown by a lot of the young guys just, and young girls down there. Just the drinking and partying, yeah. that's it? No, 18, 19 year old, you feel like you're trapped in the military. So on the weekend, you like to go. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, I mean, if that's if you're talking about just the weekend, you'll probably blow like what at most a thousand, you know? So you probably keep half of that. So at the end of the year, maybe like what you have like 12,000, maybe? Yeah, Talking yeah, if you're conservative. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you know a lot of a lot of us probably just spent a lot of that money on, on random things but um, man you guys lived it up 
or something. Oh, I guess you, know, you could buy stuff like, I don't know, phones and stuff. Yeah, well, phones, you know, and, and then, again, yeah, 06, 07 was a little bit different too because in 06, 07, you were buying like video games and DVDs and uh, uh, a few different things. Like, uh, yeah, you still buy yeah. DVDs and movies oh, okay. and stuff like that because that's, you know, 06, 07 is less streaming than back then. Yeah, so that, that would burn it up. So, yeah. oh, okay, cool, man. So yeah, I was always curious to see how much uh, you know. So you young guys, you know, I mean, would you recommend, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I would. You know, when I was going through it, obviously, it was just one of those things where you're just going through the motion. You're not really thinking financially and things like that. But uh, but I think what it teaches you, as far yeah. as like the discipline, the work ethic, the the attention to details, the having the integrity all those little things that the marine corps really any of the branches does i'll speak specifically for the marine corps because that's where i was in but yeah those things that they teach you that discipline that they teach you if you can like keep that in your mind and then follow with that in your future i think without it i, I wouldn't th i don't think i'd be what doing you know not that i'm wow. doing things, but uh yeah definitely taught me a lot of things so i think if you're a young guy girl you don't know what you want to do and uh you don't mind being gone from home for a little bit. But, I mean, it's only what six years. It was like, I mean, for you, it was six years, uh, right? It seems like forever when you're in it. Was but, it? Wow, uh, no, it goes quick. It goes quick, but it Does always takes like, a long time. And it depends. You know, everybody's experience is going to be different. So I just speak uh, on behalf of my experience. But everybody's yeah. different journeys, you know. And there's a bunch of uh, Hmong girls and Hmong brothers out there that are, that, that are in the military that they, they're probably going to tell you a way different uh, story of what their experience was like what they saw what they did so yeah just depends so for you it what did it drag out at least you say kind of dragged out or it did not drag out or, or did it go by quick no i mean it's it still went quick it still went quick but i think when you're in it sometimes it just feels long you know because you still have to um once a month yeah. go to a place you still got to make sure your haircut is nice and tight you gotta you know, still gotta do <laughs> you gotcha. things that always reminds you that you you still belong to to the government in, in that sense so it does feel long while you're on contract i mean because you are under a contract whatever they tell you to do that is what you're gonna do so. <laughs> gotcha gotcha see contract man kind of reminds me you know, you know hey. that, that top gun uh movie that's coming out right yeah. um and uh they were they were talking they were talking to like uh what is it is it tom oh man what's his name who's the uh oh, maverick right they're talking maverick right and something about they're like Merrick, they're called orders. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what they are. It's literally when you're in the service, you'll literally get a piece of paper that tells you exactly where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, with your name on it, it's signed by your command and all those things. So, I mean, it's official as it gets. If you're not there, you're not there and you'll be in trouble. So, you know, uh, I mean, so you're the government gotcha. property, right? So, Cool. So there you guys go. You know, uh, you know, two's recommending, you know, it's probably a good thing if you guys want to go. Uh, it's up to you guys to uh, see if you guys want to join. Uh, but uh, like uh, you said, what, 20, 20,000 a year or something like that? Yeah, as a, that as amount, a you know, starting pay as uh, the lowest rank in the, on the enlisted <laughs> side. Yeah. So, and uh, I think there's other benefits do that too right you think you get like college or something like that or yes yeah, so so you get like you'll get like college benefits uh you know it's a little bit different reserve or active duty depends which one you choose but you'll get like college benefits um uh, you know it, they help you buy a house uh you know so there's definitely benefits to it uh yeah and if you think about those things they're actually really helpful you know, I was able to buy my first house, uh, which is the one I live in now with no money down, which was helpful. Ah, um, that's you know, awesome. Yeah, there's a veterans loan or something. That's what they call it, right? Uh, I forgot what they call it. Your VA loan. VA loan. Yeah, your VA loan. And it's helpful when you're yeah. just young and trying to, you know, you don't necessarily have the down payment, even if it's 3% conventional or whatever. It yeah. just helps to have those little things that the VA will, will give you. You still have got VA medical. Uh, yeah. So there's things that come with it, you know. The the government cooks it up a little bit, but obviously you work for it. Cool, cool. There was a there was a question: Is the GI Bill real? I, I don't even know what that is. What what's a GI? Yes, you know what GI that is? Bill is the assistance that we get from the government from the from the government for for education. Um, 
I mean, yeah, it is. It is real. <laughs> uh, you will <laughs> get money. It does. So it does depend, though. Like if you're a full timer, you'll mm -hmm. probably get all your benefit. And if you're like a part timer, like I was, you only get a portion of the benefit. So, but there's still money that they'll give you for you to go to school, and they'll a lot of oh, times okay. also pay you while you're in school. So it's like you get your school paid for, plus you get paid on top, like it's a job. So that's kind of nice. Oh, cool, cool. So let's. Let's all so let's go over to like so you so that was the easy transition to uh, I mean your your firefighting position right I mean did is that what you wanted to do when you came out of it? you're like hey I mean there's positions open how did you get into that fire uh, firefighting yeah position? so I came back from Africa this was 2009 2010 so I was 21 and yeah. uh, I had actually no idea how this fire service works uh you know and here in, in, in civilian life but i just remember i did like a google search city of st paul fire department and then at the time they're were, they were looking to hire and so then i went through that whole process which that in itself was a lengthy process you got to go through like a physical test a written test and you're basically competing against everybody else who wants that job yeah. uh, you end up getting put on a ranking list and then from there you just wait because the on you know with these government the uh, jobs like police or fire the openings yeah. only happen if someone leaves if someone retires then the openings happen. Oh. Uh, it's not like a big company that grows and multiplies 5x every you know year or two so it's uh it's a lengthy process i, I mean i don't want to discourage people but how big was that competition group that you were going through uh, so when i applied there were the final list had i believe like I want to say, twelve hundred people on the final list, and five thousand people initially applied. Holy cow! Yeah, Holy so your god. odds are pretty small, but at the same time, I like like just for that. Wait, just for that one position, or I guess per round. I mean, I guess <clears throat> for that one position, I guess right, because that was yes. the position that they offered. Every year, there's probably and it changes all the time based on the city's needs. But yeah, every year you're looking at maybe anywhere from ten to twenty positions open up every year give or take so out of you know a thousand wow. people uh, yeah you'll sit on that list for maybe three four years and then the list reset and then they start a new list so then you wow <clears throat> so so you only got like a <clears throat> like maybe what three year round i guess three yeah, years yeah, maybe <clears throat> Three to four years on the list, and then the list recycles, and then you got to go back and do the test, the physical, the ring. You got to start all over again. So if you didn't get it in the first four years, you got to go do it again and compete again with the thousand people or however many people show up. So you know, some people will give up after two rounds because that's almost a decade of your life. Uh, yeah, I got lucky. I got hired on the same round where I tested, but yeah. I still waited three years from the time I applied to the time I got hired, and that's with knowing that you may never even get the job so a lot some of it's luck you know some of it's timing yeah uh i mean what is it like oh man so what was it what was i i was gonna say uh so f so f you're saying five thousand people you compete in it i mean over what what is like oh, it's hard to say like what what are you doing as a backup like are you like still working like yeah. or do you do you have to wait i mean i'm assuming you you can do other stuff right yeah or i mean you, so you pretty much just wait on the city to send you a letter that says hey we want to give you an interview so in the meantime while i was doing that um i was just working some part-time job at, i was working a, actually a full-time job doing security and i was in college full-time trying to get okay. my bachelor's degree so that's that was kind of my plan like hey if this firefighting thing doesn't work yeah. at least I'll have a degree and i can i'm not you know i'm not losing too much time i'm still wow. trying so on the side um, dude kudos to you man you were still going to school and instead of waiting you were just you were still yeah, moving you forward really for it you know because you you could wait for it forever and it never happens so i was like man i gotta you know at the time like 22 23 i'm like you know i still gotta yeah. go to school, finish that up i never did finish college um because yeah. i got the job but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well so what does it take right Did, like uh Two year school or did, what does it take to to even so like for, what, yeah so for, for firefighting you only need to have an emt certification which is your emergency medical technician course which is only a semester long and you only need uh -huh. to have a high school degree and then you gotta, and then you got to pass your physical test obviously you got to be able to do the job physically but 
Wait, okay, well, what's the physical test? I mean, like, I don't know, a mile or something like that? Or? Yeah, the physical test is basically you put on firefighting clothes and you got to, like, drag a 170-pound dummy and drag a hose and, like, take a hose up a, a, a tower. Yeah. Uh, and then it's all timed. So you're timed against everybody else who's doing this. Um, and that's, oh. that's what ranks you. So it is competitive in, in that sense as well, physically, too. So is there about okay? So do they do do they rank you by score on the test, and they they rank you by physical as well? Yeah, or? exactly. So they rank you by one a written test, uh, and then they rank you by how fast you were on the physical, and then those two scores average together, and then from yeah. there you get ranked on the final list, and then from there you just wait, you just wait and hope that your name gets pulled out the hat, you know. So let's say everybody's got pretty much like i don't know like an a i don't know what a is but like let's yeah. say the top the top everybody got pretty much the same do they do they do they look at personality and stuff like that or is it just like you know yeah, so then they'll do you know, scores. yeah they'll do interviews obviously you know if you fall kind of in the same group you'll you'll just go through interviews and then at that point they'll make their decision Sometimes the, the some of the decisions are probably and can be politically, you know, inclined. You know, uh, it's a city yeah. job. It is a government job. So some of that plays a part sometimes too. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's just a big luck. Uh, it's just a big. Uh, you know, it's it's a luck thing a lot of times. I, I, your skill play a part too, but it's luck too because you don't need to come in with no experience. Yeah. Man, kudos too. Holy cow, that's a that's a huge. Yeah, it was a long uh, wait. Fight to get to that position then oh wow okay not like not like cops i think you just you just go to like, like yeah cops you need to do i know and that's totally different yeah. yeah yeah cops you do need to have a four years i believe now is uh, it okay yeah so with them you do i was just <clears throat> i think down here we just had like a high school and then i guess uh certain you know just yeah go through some sort of course and that's it so get it to them though. that's a tough job <laughs> yeah yeah that's man crazy. wow okay so like man uh what what is what is what is the starting pay you yeah, know for so i've been on the job for eight years uh the starting pay is so so it's important to note that we do 10 days a month that is, our schedule is 10 days a month 24 yeah. hour shifts so we're putting in 240 hours a month as opposed to your regular 160 for most people, right? It yeah. It's going by 40 hour work week. So we put in way more hours. Um, so the hourly starting is about 21 bucks. So you're at 56 grand uh, a yeah. year. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. So what are the, like, okay, so I get it, you know, it's cool. Um, you get what's is there any perks like kind of like the military or no no not as much on the fire side i mean your medical is a little bit is decent um i mean you can move up fairly quickly like i think after after five to ten years most firefighters are probably floating around 80 grand uh which is your base pay um, wow okay yeah yeah so, so just, just, just to get in like, the door that's yeah that's yeah so. that's really just starting i think last year uh, i brought in like 85 so it's it's, okay you know it's not it's not terrible um you know because you do have even though we do work 10 days a month 24 hour shifts we also do get if we're not counting the hours and let's say we're just counting the days you do get 20 days off a month which is actually how i i'm able to run the business because i have 20 days off a month which most people don't have that opportunity and so it's kind of kind of like wow so okay so you get so i see what you, okay so 20 days so you work 20 days in a month so that's 10, why you have that oh, 10 days in a yeah, month 10 days so I have 20 Holy cow. 24 hours though. 24, 24 hours. hours. So if yeah. you go hour per hour, we work a lot more than probably your hourly full timers. If we go hour for hour, but at the yeah. price, not every hour is you're at work, but you know, sometimes you're sleeping, sometimes you're watching football, sometimes you're waiting for things to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I just cares. Wow, that's that's yeah. cool. So it's you get it in the long run as far as uh income wise. But uh, I mean, just to get in, that's that's the that's the hurdle to get a lot in. Of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work just to get in. You know, I always say, um, I always say that the firefighting is one of those things where it's probably not the job you're going for the money. You know, first of all, uh, it's not a ton of money. I mean, it's decent. You know, eighty, eighty-five grand. I think you can live a very average life if you're conservative with your money and just not not a yeah. spender. But it's not just that it's you're gonna see crazy things you're gonna be gone from the family for a while um you know you got to do it for a little bit more than the money in that type of job me 
So, so you're saying you're you're at the at, what do you guys call it? The station? Yep. Can they? Can me? Can family come and visit? Like? Yeah. Yeah. They okay. can Stop by any time and. Okay. Say, ah, you just can't leave. You you know you belong to that place for 24 hours. That's your work. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, all right. I mean, I just figured you got kids and stuff like that. All right. So you're like, can't see your kids for like. <laughs> <laughs> certain amount of days that's kind of harsh you know so, so but that's cool so, so our 10 days a month is split up throughout the month so we're never there for more than 24 hours in a row oh okay yeah, yeah. so it's it's like broken up through your month you'll work okay. like every other day and then you'll have like a week off and, yeah it's so like you're not you, you don't disappear for like no. a long time come back oh, kind of like far as at the most yeah that's yeah. cool that's cool man oh um, yeah so, it's, it's not bad yeah i mean they if your family needs to see you, they just come come on over, you know. So yeah, yeah, kind of like an office job, kind of. You know, Pretty much. Too. I mean, some people are at the office from uh, six to eight to six six to eight p.m. too, you know. So yeah, it's almost the same. Yeah, what's the what's the craziest stuff like you've seen? Like, uh, man, you know, I was you had you had sent me that question earlier, and I was trying yeah. to think what's the craziest thing. But in, in firefighting, man, you see so much crazy stuff that I couldn't even pick one, but. You know, I'll just I'll just list a few things that I've seen on the job. You know, uh, yeah. like I've picked up you know a couple couple bodies out of the river. I have picked up bodies that uh, were you know hanging uh, due to suicide. Uh, people shot in the head. People shot in the chest. People stabbed. Uh, uh, giving birth to kids. Uh, yeah. So man, you see it all. You know, you are the uh, you're the last line of defense when things are going wild. And yeah, it's part of the job. You know oh man what was i mean how was your how was your first experience you know seeing like i mean you probably i mean i don't know in your marines day did you see like a dead body or anything how was you your know, marine corps i had a very uh easy time so so when you first i mean you guys saw this yep. what was your reaction <laughs> you know you don't know how you're gonna take it to be honest you, you have no idea what it's gonna be like you don't know how you're gonna react to it um but i think you train a lot so your mind kind of almost gets itself ready for it that by yeah. the time you see it it's almost like uh you know you're there to do your job so you're not really looking at at what you're seeing you're just more looking at it as like a body that needs your assistance and then you go back to your training like you know if someone's uh mm -hmm. been stabbed in the chest you're not you know you're more thinking like okay what do i have to do so you're almost like your your area of focus is almost like so concentrated on what you need to do in the moment oh gotcha like yeah you, you can think about it later when you go home but i try to, I try to <laughs> think about that stuff because you gotta take care of the situation i guess I, I guess i see what you're saying so uh i see what you're saying uh two go hey two goes hey two what's going he says that uh, what's the largest fire that you fought before like yeah so largest fire let me think we had a pretty good one in st paul at one point there was a grocery store and we were there from i think like 1 a.m all the way to noon yeah, all from one from one. Holy cow! Two, they're just sitting outside spraying water, um, just trying to drown the building, basically. Wow! I mean, <laughs> that's that's a long time. Would you would you tap into like the fire hydrant and just, you just hosing it down? The fire hydrant and just flow thousands of gallons per minute for hours. Wow! Yeah, damn. Well, there street. you go, too. Holy cow! I, I just see when uh, I think I saw a house fire once and they came in and it was like out just like that. But if yeah, you had to be yeah, out there for like, yeah, this depends where in the timing you catch it, right? Like if a room's on fire and you catch it within the first two, three minutes, it might be isolated to just your room, especially if the door was shut, maybe it'll stay isolated to the room. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer for us to either get there or for someone to call. And so at that yeah. point, you know, maybe the conditions are right. You got open doors, you got open windows, so you got oxygen going through the building, and then at that time it can go real quick. So it just depends where on the timeline you arrive. Ah, uh, gotcha. And um, you know, I was thinking like I was thinking like guys, so you're in Minnesota, man. I mean, I've been in Minnesota when it was like yeah. I'm from Florida, right? It's cold up there, man. Is it does that bother you? I mean, is it is that like the worst time? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my least favorite time, and it's you know it's one thing to it's one thing to fight a fire when it's a hundred degrees and humid in Minnesota. You can yeah. take your jacket off and drink some water, but when it's uh, negative ten and you've got negative thirty wind chill and you still yeah. got to fight that fire, I mean we basically make an ice house out of a house. Like we spray so much water, but it's so cold it freezes on the spot. 
And so it's just, oh. it's just difficult. Everything that you're working with gets frozen. Your clothes get frozen. I mean, it's a, it's a giant pain in the ass, man. But it's, uh, you know, you still got to do it. It's, you you got to finish your job, but it's, uh, it's, it's tough. It's cold. Wow. It sucks. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't hear. Like, I remember, I remember the first time I stepped in Minnesota. It was, it was like cold season. My nose hair just froze. I'm like, holy cow, this is the coldest I've ever been. So, if you had to deal with that all the time for that whole season, man, I'm like, dude, this is yeah, it gets pretty crazy. Is it, I mean, does, yeah. is, does it insulate you pretty well that whatever you wear, like those jackets and stuff? Uh, yeah, it were, it's it's warm until you get wet. Oh, then okay, just, then you're just a frozen icicle. Oh man. So, so like toughest call, like is there, what's the toughest call you ever had to do? I think the toughest calls are probably going to be, uh, your, your, so we do EMS. So we're like an ambulance service as well as a fire department. So we do both. So we'll go like, like, you know, we're not just going to fire as we go to, like I said earlier, shooting stabbings and, uh, recovery of bodies in the river, things like that. So I think, uh, you know, the hard calls are definitely your, more your medical stuff are always tough. Uh, you go to somebody's house and you see the whole family there crying over your dad that passed away or whatever all those things are always tough but you try to find a way to uh um, you know stay busy uh, gotcha gotcha yeah. okay all yeah. right so yeah let's go over to like your business like that um so uh those of you guys didn't know uh, i had a real estate conference uh back then and uh <clears throat> This brother here helped me out. You know, he did a little, he did a little sponsorship for us. So I want to appreciate. Uh, thanks, thanks, bro, for uh, you know you sponsoring right. as your business to uh, to help our, our our real estate seminar. So I just want to thank you for um, for um, sponsoring us on this. So yeah, sure. uh, tell us about your business, man. Uh, your your uh, your business is called what? It's uh, so it's Yellow Auto Sports. It's uh, auto detailing, so car cleaning basically. And window tintings, tint and windows, and I started yeah. that in 2015. So it's been six years this month, this month here in September. Yeah, cool. And uh, I mean, I, I liked everything. It sounds cool. I mean, uh, and you did yellow thing too. I mean, what's what? How did you get that name for it? Yeah, so that name's actually uh, that's like my cousin and I kind of blended that name together. It's just my last name and his first name. Oh. Originally, I started the business with a family member, and then it, you know, it went to just my, it went to just myself. I started and created a whole team. We had like five employees at one time, and then yeah. uh, I reduced it all back down to just myself in the last year after COVID and stuff like that. So, made made a few adjustments. Oh, okay, cool. It, it sounds cool. I mean, your your uh, your logo looks awesome, you know, and you know, the yellow looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so uh i mean how did you i mean just just uh just walk me through it like how did you go from like firefighting marines to like hey i want to do it did you like cars or something like that or i mean yeah so i was like cars but i never thought i'd open a business that was just a random thing that happened that was just me and yeah. my cousin have a conversation and then we literally uh incorporated the next morning and then we just jumped into it rented a shop really brought no experience into it i really i i, I really hadn't done the things that i even offered um, yeah. When we opened the business, so we were really jumping into it like as virgin as you can be with any of the skills. And so, yeah, big mistake, I wouldn't do that again. But at the same time, I learned that it doesn't matter if you put in the time; you're gonna get good at it if you just invest enough time into it. Um, yeah, yeah, I was following you like when you first when you bought the building. Wait, was was you renting or you're leasing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. we're just leasing it. Yeah, was it you that had a had a safe in there or something like that? Oh yeah, when we first moved into the current building that I'm in, which is in St. Paul, that you or guys maybe. couldn't get opened or something like that, or is that? Yeah, yep, yep. It's funny. That what was in there? I, mean, I was so oh, curious. Somebody came and towed it away, but yeah, no, I couldn't... never tried to get in there. I should have tried, tried to get in there. It could have been like my full. Uh, that could have been my retirement in there. Who knows? <laughs> could have been like gold bars or something like that. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I don't know. I never found out. Oh man, I was I was I was curious to see what was in there because it was it was a like big safe. Oh you yeah, know? it was uh, anything reinforced that big must have something in it. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, I don't know, but uh, cool man. So like, okay, so tell me about the business. Like, okay, so you guys do details. Like, yeah, I, mean, I, I see you guys do like uh, you know, you tent stuff and you guys wrap stuff, right? Yep. Um, so I do detailing and do window tinting. So. Uh, there's many ways you can go about that with, especially in the world of like cleaning cars, there's many ways you can go about it. You can either choose to be a guy who charges a hundred bucks and do 20 cars in a day, 
Yeah. Or you can be a guy who chooses to do uh, very more high-end work and make a couple of thousands in a day. So, um, you know, I kind of tried both, but it's a physical job. Uh, you know, you're, you're cleaning people's carpet, you're buffing people's paint. I mean, you're bending over all kinds of crazy ways to do these cars. And so for me, I just figured out the going to the, the more, you know, high end, make a good name for yourself way is, is, it's better. You make better. Oh. Uh, okay. Makes you enjoy your job a lot more. You know, it's easier to stay passionate about it because you're doing people's personal, you know, I mean, we're working on people's hundred thousand dollar cars. And so there's there's a, there's a joy in that as opposed to when you're just doing it, yeah it's, it's like a mr car wash who does or whatever you might have done in florida but when you're doing yeah. 100 cars in an hour and it you charge eight bucks and not you charge 20 bucks for the service you'll quickly yeah. have motivation you know yeah it's just another car but when you get those nice fancy cars that comes in like like i see all the fancy cars i'm like holy cow you know you know i don't see those daily you know and you have them like in the garage you know like so yeah yeah so like what's what's the i mean what's the nicest car that you ever touched <laughs> or something? Uh, yeah i mean there, there's a few cool cars that come to mind there's a car car called a rally fighter which is like a very uh they're not even production cars they're like uh <clears throat> they're just like yeah. a one-off car that they they make very few of that one is cool and then the delorean from uh, back to the future no car, way you got one of those <laughs> yeah those are always cool so tinting one of those is interesting just because you never was, see those yeah uh, yeah yeah, I mean, I'm more excited by the stuff that's older that's uh, that you don't see very much than than I am with uh, the super expensive supercars. To be honest, you know, stuff yeah, that's more unique. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, because you won't see those anymore. And those are like old ancient stuff. Right? Yeah, those are rare. You like what's see. what's the most rare? Where's one you seen like a? Uh, well, today I just did a. Today I just did a, a 1964 Chevy C10, which is a pickup truck. Uh, yeah i saw that one holy cow that one looks nice yeah you, know, you don't see those every day either so yeah 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 that one i just saw that uh that was pretty cool so um yeah i love yeah, it man I, I, I like i like them all to be honest you know i just enjoy i just enjoy cars so whatever you bring me if, if you like it then i'm liking it and then i want to find <laughs> i'm like i want to find out why you like it you know i want to find out what what motivates you to drive that thing you know so so I mean, what do you like to do the most at the shop then? Uh, I like to do my ceramic coating. They're probably my more profitable service. It's okay. a little bit more work, but uh, for a coating, you know, it's uh, about a two thousand dollar job. Uh, it takes me about a day and a half, give or take. So you know, oh okay, pretty decent payout. So if you can do a few of those a month, it's pretty good. Um, okay, but those are more those are more thorough. I'm really just refining the paint, trying to make the paint and the car look as clean as possible. So it's always fun to do, uh, not just for me to make my profit, but usually the client's super stoked about those too. So, you know. Mm, gotcha. So the coating, yeah, two thousand dollars. Is it just flat rate? Two thousand? He's like, hey, yeah, it's like two thousand dollars, and it's about eight to ten hours of work. Just me. It's just me refining your paint, trying to make it as clean and and make it yeah. look as good as possible for you. Yeah, and then a ceramic coated. Uh, which is like a protection that you put on paint. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, two, hey, two has two questions. Two has two questions, and dude, there's a lot of two in here. Yeah, I'm a two. My my name is called two. Also, two chai, and then you're two, and then we got two thing here. <laughs> two goes, hey, what cars do you have? I, I mean, I, I... yeah. Uh, so I have three cars. I got a 1993 Acura NSX, which is my sport weekend car. Ooh, I got yeah. A 2005 Lexus GX470 that's lifted. That's my camping and off-road car. And then I've got uh, yeah. a 2007 Forester XT that I just got, which is my daily driver sport car. <laughs> Damn. So and then, all right, cool. Man. I think I saw you go camping once. That was uh, that was pretty cool. You know, yeah, yeah, um, fun. Uh, I think you did a road trip or something. That was pretty yeah. cool. Colorado, uh, yeah, Colorado. Drove drove the truck up 13,000 feet. Pretty cool experience. Yeah, you got some nice pictures on that too. Yeah. So uh, I was like, wow. Uh, and then his last question was, what's your dream car, I guess? <laughs> Man, dream car for me was, uh, you know, my dream car was actually a WRX, which is like below what I have now. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of where my standard was at the time. And I kind of reached it. So now now I got to figure out what my next dream car is. Uh, I don't really know. Yeah. 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 Same with me, man. I'm like, 
my dream car was a uh, was MDX. I got that, and yeah, I'm exactly. happy now. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you, you know, I don't see anything else that I like, you know. So uh, I'm still exactly. driving my MDX, and <laughs> I don't get no crazy dream car that's like a Lamborghini or nine. Yeah, or nothing like that. No. Cool, man. So yeah, I mean, uh, we we kind of like hit all the questions. That, yeah, I was kind of interested. Hey, you guys got any questions? Go ahead and comment below. Uh, we got two. We talked a little about uh, with. You know, you got two on the show. We talked a little about his marine life, uh, and then uh, how he got into firefighting, and then now he's a business owner. Um, you know, as a you, I guess you wouldn't call it a side gig. It's because you kind of, yeah, it's kind it's, of like almost neck and neck now, right? Yeah, it's basically they're basically both full time. I mean, I, I work probably uh, man out of a month. I'm working at least, you know, and you know, all, all you guys are business owners. You know how it is. So I'm working. I mean, pretty yeah. much every day. I don't really take any time off. Which actually, I'm gonna give myself like a month off this yeah. year for the first time in six years. So I'm pretty excited about that. Would you say, like, I mean, from a business guy to another business guy, what's the toughest, you know, out of those three? Uh, man, Marine, firefighting, or being a business owner? Uh, you know, they're they're all stressful in their own way. Yeah. Um, I mean, firefighting is easy for the most part when you're just sitting at the fire station watching football, but. When you gotta wake up at three and fight a fire, and the fire is like four hundred degrees inside, I mean that's, you know, that's that's work. That's that's the definition of physical labor. Yeah. Um, and then the shop is stressful at times too. You know, when things slow down, uh, when people haven't called for a day or two, and your schedule looks a little bit open. Yeah. And it's not as booked as you want it to be. You know, that's stressful too because you still get the bills to pay, and <laughs> your things to take care of. So. They're all a little bit stressful in their own way. Which one's the, which one's the most stressful? I would say business, you know. Yeah, business is more headache because no one's guiding you. <laughs> yeah. No one's yeah. guiding you. Yeah. Yeah, there's really no template to be a business no. owner, right? And no. there's, you know, you're constantly promoting your business. And then, you know, there's all these other headaches like, you know, get an inventory and, you know watching out for lawsuits and stuff like that, you know, make yeah, people happy. Yeah, and... there's a lot in, uh, yeah, there's a lot. And then at the beginning when you start touching expensive cars and, you know, you're not even 100% sure all the time how, how you're going to do it and stuff like that. You know, you figure out as you go a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't deal with that so much anymore. But, yeah, the stress was real at year one or two. Yeah, it is, man. I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> um. Dude, bro, thanks for coming on the show. Um, <clears throat> how yep. can people get a hold of you? So if they're looking for the website, um, yellowautosports.com, uh, they can find me. I've got a YouTube channel where I do a bunch of car work. They can watch ah. stuff there if they want to learn things. I'm on Instagram. Okay. I'm on TikTok. I'm on every social media platform out there for the business. Cool. Uh, so how do you spell it? Right? Spell it, right? spell yep. it out to us. Y-E-L-O. Auto Sports, so A U T O S P O R T S, so yellowautosports.com. And if you just Google it, it'll come up all over the place. Um, uh -huh. Otherwise, if you're like got questions about firefighting and Marine Corps stuff, I mean, you can try to find me either through this or just on Facebook. You know, I'm always open, open, answer questions, help some of the young bucks, uh, young young girls yeah. come up. Yeah. Do things. Absolutely, man. Thanks for inspiring. And you have a really inspiring story here. Um, Kudos to you, um, man. If I'll be parents, man, I'll be proud. <laughs> That's all I have to say, man. Yeah, so, that's what we're working towards. I think yeah, you know, yeah. Getting kind them of happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they can show you off or something like that, right? <laughs> so yeah, we usually uh, we usually end the show with uh, with one question: is that you know, if you if you had a billion dollars, what's the first yeah. two things you would do with it? Uh, I'd like to ask you that. You know, what would you yeah. do with that? Uh, I'd probably put a lot of it into my business and make it much bigger right away. Uh, yeah. I would uh, probably start going on to the, the real estate side, get a couple of properties. Uh, oh, look at this guy. Yeah. Some away for a couple of generations, invest most of it. And then uh, yeah, you got to find something to give it to as well. So probably just spread the wealth around a little bit. You know, I don't need a billion to survive. So look at this guy. What a good guy. You know, you're looking to multiply it and then you're just going to, Help other people out with it. So yeah, uh, takes money. Great man, <laughs> you're the guy. You're the you're the main man. 
So appreciate you, dude, bro. Appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, um, me, thanks man. for being a, you know, showing us what a true hustle looks like, you know, and, uh, guys, reach out to these guys, give us, give, give these guys a few thumbs, thumbs up, uh, a few likes and, um, uh, two, Hey, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, I appreciate the um, time. any last words for let you go? Uh, well, since it's among hustlers, uh, put your head down. Don't worry too much about what other people are saying about you and grind. And then that's it. You got to just put Bro, that and nobody. I love that. It. I love that. Love that. Okay, cool, man. All right, guys. Uh, good night and, uh, stay hustling. Keep hustling. All right, guys. Good night.